Clara Rackham. Clara Dorothea Tabber Rackham, 3 December 1875, 11 March 1966, was an English feminist and politician active in the women's suffrage movement, the Women's Cooperative Guild, the Peace Movement, Adult Education, the Family Planning Movement, and the Labor Movement. She was a pioneering magistrate, poor law guardian, educator, anti-poverty campaigner and penal reformer in the city of Cambridge where she was a long-serving city and county councillor. Clara Rackham was vice chairman of Cambridge County Council from 1956 to 1958 and chairman of the Cambridge County Council Education Committee from 1945 to 1957. She first came to prominence through her leading role in the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies and later became a significant national figure in the labor movement, acquiring a formidable national reputation for her expertise on factory conditions, workers' rights, equal pay, and national insurance. Family and Early Life Clara Rackham, known as Dorothea to her family, was born in Notting Hill, the daughter of Henry Tabber, a gentleman farmer from a nonconformist family based in Bocking in Essex, and Emma Taverney Woodcock, who came from Wigan, Lancashire. She was educated at Notting Hill High School, St. Leonard's School 1892-93, Bedford College in 1894, and like her older sister, Margaret, attended Newnham College, Cambridge. At Newnham College 1895-98, Clara studied classics, but much of her time was taken up with outdoor pursuits and with politics. She was a prominent supporter of the Liberal Party in the Newnham College Political Society, a proficient long-distance cyclist, swam regularly in the River Cam, and was captain of the hockey team. Clara left with the equivalent of a third-class degree women, were not officially allowed to graduate from Cambridge University until 1948. However, she had made a lifelong friend in another Newnham College student, Susan Lawrence, one of the first three women to be elected to Parliament as Labour MP, and had also met her future husband, Harris Rackham, a lecturer in classics at Newnham College from 1893. Harris, a brother of the illustrator Arthur Rackham, became a senior fellow at Christ's College in 1899. The couple married in 1901 and lived at Four Grange Terrace before setting up home in a Georgian house at Nine Park Terrace with a pleasant view overlooking Parker's Peace in 1925. The marriage was a happy one and lasted until Harrisey's death in 1944. Clara remained in the house until 1957. Clara established the Cambridge branch of the Women's Cooperative Guild in 1902 and became its president, remaining active in her local group for over 20 years and writing on the value of cooperative ideals in Cambridge. A Brief Study in Social Questions, 1906, edited by Eglantine Jeb. Jeb founded the Save the Children Fund in 1919 to raise money for German and Austrian children. In 1923, Clara served on the Birth Control Subcommittee of the Standing Joint Committee of Industrial Women's Organizations as J.C. Woe, and by 1930 had become chairman of the organization. Clara chaired the National Conference of Labor Women at the Kingsway Hall in London, where as J.C. Woe put forward two reports for discussion on abolition of the marriage bar and on equal pay for equal work. In Cambridge, she worked closely with her good friend, the Homerton College trained Lee Manning president of the National Union of Teachers in 1930 elected as the Labour MP for Islington East in 1928 and then for Epping in 1945. Both women were associated with the ragged school set up in a building in Young Street, which is now the site of Anglia Ruskin University Music Therapy Department. In the 1930s, Clara supported Manning's initiatives in Parliament to welcome Basque children to Britain who were seeking refuge during the Spanish Civil War, and some of these children were given homes in Cambridge. The Liberal Party The youthful Clara was an admirer of William Gladstone. She was the leader of the Liberal group at Newnham College and spoke persuasively in student debates. When Gladstone died in 1898 on the day before she was due to begin part one of the classical tripos, 
she was not told the news in case she were to do badly. Clara is first listed as a host of a public meeting in an advertisement that appeared on 24 October 1902 in the Cambridge Independent Press. Her attendance is reported at the public meeting on 29 October 1902 held at the Old Sturton Hall. The Liberal Party were protesting against the Education Bill, which would have excluded women from their role on school boards. Clara's objection to the legislation was that it removed the right of women to be elected by local voters to their existing roles and made them reliant on the consent of other members of boards rather than a direct mandate from the pay. And, oh, Leading Suffragist Factory Inspector During the First World War, Clara worked as a factory inspector for the Home Office and was one of four women appointed to temporary positions on 25 October 1915 working alongside Jeanette Tawney, wife of the philosopher R. H. Tawney. She was deployed initially in Lancashire and then in the London area. The post meant that she had to turn down the offer of an academic position at Bedford College in the University of London, which was founded as a women's college, because she could not be spared from work of national importance. She also worked voluntarily in the University of Liverpool settlement. From 1930 to 1932, Clara served on the Royal Commission on Unemployment Insurance where she clashed with the cotton industry administrator Raymond Street, who thought unemployment benefits the dole too high, and wrongly assumed this was the consensus on the commission. Clara was a signatory to a minority report by the Labour Party members on the commission in 1933. She later published a short book in which she demonstrated her own expertise on factory conditions, factory law in 1938. She was a lifelong advocate of workers' rights and an early advocate of the 40-hour work week. Labor Party Politician in Cambridge At the end of the First World War, Clara joined the Labor Party, though she stood as an independent representing the National Union of Societies, for Equal Citizenship NUSEC in the Cambridge Town Council election of March 19 -a. Clara developed a close relationship with Hugh Dalton, who was to become Chancellor of the Exchequer in the Ethelin Ministry of 1945, and campaigned for Dalton when he contested the 1922 Cambridge by-election. Lee Manning remembered that, during the general strike of 1926, the Cambridge strike headquarters was in the Rackham's basement kitchen. Clara held numerous elected positions in Cambridge and was made an alderman by both the city and the county council. She was first elected as a councillor for West Chesterton in North Cambridge 1919-22. Clara was returned unopposed to represent Romsey for the last time in 1946. Clara stood for Parliament twice with no success. She was defeated in Chelmsford 1922 and lost heavily to a rising star in the Conservative Party, the sitting in P.R.A. Butler, in Saffron Walden, 1935. With the exception of the few years in which she worked as a factory inspector, she never left Cambridge. She fought innumerable battles to improve living conditions for the working-class communities in the north and east of the city, lobbying hard for the indoor heated swimming pool on the corner of Parker's Peace and Mill Road. Today's light and airy glass pool remains as one of her lasting achievements. She opened the Rock Road Public Library and also helped to finance the construction of the Labor Club on Mill Road, which was built by voluntary labor in the 1920s. Ramsay MacDonald, the first Labor Party Prime Minister, laid the foundation stone in 1926, and Clara spoke at the opening ceremony in 1928. Magistrate and Penal Reformer Clara became a magistrate in 1920, and, with Florence Ada Keynes, mother of economist John Maynard Keynes and Edith Bethune Baker, was one of the first women in Cambridge to serve on the bench. The work of the criminal justice system, and, in particular, the inhumane way in which the law dealt with juvenile offenders became a central concern for her throughout her life. Marjorie Fry, director of the Howard League for Penal Reform from its inception in 1921, and another J.P. was a good friend. 
Clara joined the Howard League and worked with Clara Martineau of Birmingham City Council as part of a group reporting on child sexual abuse to Parliament in 1925. Clara was also a founder member of the Magistrates Association in 1927 and an advocate of probation and opponent of corporal punishment. In 1933, she wrote to the Manchester Guardian regarding the recent Children and Young Persons Act and drew attention to the range of options made available to magistrates when dealing with children in need of care, or PRA. In 1933, she argued that no young person under the age of 17 should be sent to prison. At the time, the age limit was 14. She resigned as a magistrate in 1950, and from her other committees when she became aware that loss of hearing had made it virtually impossible for her to carry on. Pioneering Broadcaster Clara was a pioneering broadcaster in the early days of BBC Radio in the 1920s and one of the first women to be heard on the airwaves. She gave talks on the work of a magistrate and on legal matters. A series How We Manage Our Affairs in 1929 began with a talk How We Elect Our Counselors. Education Clara was chairman of the Cambridge County Council Education Committee from 1945 to 1957 and took a strong interest in girls' education, nursery education, and education in the early years and campaigned for free school milk and meals for the benefit of undernourished children. She was a personal friend of Henry Morris, the innovative director of education for Cambridgeshire from 1922, and shared his visionary ideal of the village college. Village colleges combined secondary education with community and adult education and were set up in Sawston, Bottisham, Bassingbourne, Comerton, Impington, Linton, and elsewhere in the countryside surrounding Cambridge with Clara's enthusiastic support. However, she never fully embraced the Labour Party's post-war support for comprehensive education, believing that small selective grammar schools were of more benefit to working-class children. She served with Lillian Mary Hart Clark on the governing body of the Cambridge School of Arts, Crafts and Technology, which was renamed the Cambridgeshire College of Arts and Technology in 1958, and Anglia Ruskin University in 2005. A large modern building containing laboratories and teaching rooms was erected on the Cambridge campus in 1972 and named Rackham in her honor. This was demolished in 2009. She had a lifelong interest in the education of working people, was a part-time lecturer in social history and local government for the Workers' Educational Association, and elected chairman of the WEA Eastern District. She always valued and retained her links with Newnham College, where she organized a summer school for working women and was on the college's governing body from 1920 to 1940 and on the Newnham College Council for all. The Peace Movement Like many former suffragists, Rackham placed her hopes for peace in the League of Nations between the wars, and she attended meetings of the local Cambridge branch whenever she could. At the height of the Cold War, when the country was beset with fears of a nuclear war breaking out between the Soviet Union and the United States, Clara joined the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, which was founded in 1958 to call for Britain to lead the world in getting rid of nuclear weapons by disarming unilaterally. Her great-niece, Sarah Rackham, remembers being taken as a child on the annual CND march from Aldermaston to London. Clara participated in her last peace march in 1961, at the age of 85. Other members of the Tabor family, including her niece, Mary Tabor, also remember being taken on the Aldermaston march by Clara when they were children. Final years Clara became a well-known figure in Cambridge in her later years, riding everywhere on her bicycle, doing voluntary work in the community, enjoying her contact with young and old alike, adjusting with indomitable good humor to her own loss of hearing and reading aloud to the partially sighted. In 1962, she delivered her last speech at the Golden Jubilee of the Cambridge branch of the National Council of Women of Great Britain. In 1993, Joyce Bellamy and Eileen Price, who wrote the entry on Clara Rackham in the Dictionary of Labor Biography, 
recalled how overwhelmed they had been by the public response to a letter requesting information about Clara's life and work which they had sent to the Cambridge Evening News in 1980. Although she had been brought up in the Christian faith, her outlook on life became decidedly secular over the years, and she eventually joined the Humanist Association. Elami and Price note that Clara had come to adopt the practice of waiting outside the borough council chamber until the prayers before council meetings had finished. She also refused the mayoralty of the borough of Cambridge because she did not wish to take part in religious observances while agreeing to chair meetings of Cambridge City Council, which were not preceded by prayers 1950s. She declined the freedom of the city of Cambridge, requesting instead that a bench be placed outside the Meadowcroft Retirement Home on Trumpington Road for the use of the residents. She stated that she did not want to have a bust of herself displayed in Shire Hall during her lifetime, but stipulated that the council could do whatever they thought was appropriate after her death. Clara initially moved into the Langdon House residential care home after the death of her sister, Margaret, who had lived with her at Nine Park Terrace after Harris Rackham died. She then relocated herself voluntarily. Clara died peacefully in Langdon House in 1966 after enjoying her 90th birthday celebrations, which were attended by friends and well-wishers representing over 20 local organizations, charities, and voluntary groups, which she had supported over the years. She was cremated at the cemetery in Huntingdon Road on 15 March 1966. A tribute written in the Newnham College Roll Letter in 1967 reads, Anyone who studies the social reforms of the century in Cambridge will see how much they owe to Mrs. Rackham's devoted and unstinting championship of the underprivileged. Her aim was to give them a better way of life. Her success is her memorial. Publications Contribution to Cambridge, A Brief Study in Social Questions 1906 by Eglantine Jebb on Cooperation, Oration. Survey of Cambridge for Social Conditions in Provincial Towns 1912 by Helen Bosson K. Royal Commission on Unemployment Insurance, Abridged Minority Report 1933. Fabian Society, Society. Factory Law 1938. Lawless Youth. A Challenge to the New Europe. A Policy for the Juvenile Courts Prepared by the International Committee of the Howard League for Penal Reform 1942-1945-1947 with Marjorie Fry, Max Grunhut, Grunhut, Herman Mannheim, and Wanda Grabenska. Legacy In 1944, Clara presented the Central Library in Cambridge with a unique collection of, for the most part, signed and numbered editions of Arthur Rackham's illustrated books. Rackham Close, in Arbury, Cambridge, is named after her as was a room in the Alexwood Hall in Norfolk Street, the headquarters of the Cambridge City Labour Party. A bust was commissioned and manufactured, but its whereabouts today are unknown. In 2018, the centenary of some women obtaining the vote, Clara, and Lee Manning were selected by the Women's Local Government Society to be included in their list of pioneers whose lives had inspired a younger generation to engage in service to their local communities. A celebration of Clara Rackham's life and work in words, music and theater organized by Mary Joannew took place in the presence of members of the Rackham family at Anglia Ruskin University on 2 November 2018. The event included a specially commissioned play entitled Clara Rackham and the General Strike written by local author Rose Connelly, young dancers from the Bodyworks studio, and presentations by Sarah Rackham, Dr. Deborah Thom, and Councillor Anna Smith. The official civic ceremony in which the blue plaque was unveiled by Dame Stella Manzi, who spoke about Clara's pioneering achievements in local government, took place at Newnham College on 20 November 2018 by kind permission of the principal, Dame Carol Black and the Fellows. Dr. Gillian Sutherland, fellow emerita at Newnham College, spoke about Clara in her historical context. Both events were filmed by Anthony Carpin and may be seen on YouTube. The blue plaque was put up at Nine Park Terrace, a property belonging to Emmanuel College, 
on 25 January 2019 and a reception was held in Emmanuel College by kind permission of the master, Dame Fiona Reynolds and the Fellows. The blue plaque may be seen on the website of Cambridge. Past, present and future, a Cambridge charity which administers the blue plaque scheme. In 2019, the Friends of the Milton Road Library submitted a proposal. This has yet to receive official approval. Equals equals references equals equals equals.